What's good, you YouTube? It's Mirror Boy Squiddy back in with another video. Can we talk about how strong the Pirelli deck is for a second? Like, everyone knows that we're getting two new cards, Pirelli Lily and Pirelli Sleepy Memory in the upcoming Psyx set that drops in less than a couple of days. We've already had the sneak peek, and we know that these cards are very impactful to the deck. It makes it basically tier one, based on what we've seen from the OCG. The deck is very resilient. You play a bunch of spell cards, and you end on a powerful X Pirelli Noir that allows you to draw cards in the standby phase thanks to the effect of Pirelli Sleepy Memory. So they can draw multiple cards if they have multiple Sleepy Memories attached attached to the uh, XYZ that they decide to summon during the standby phase. Sometimes even drawing six cards, they have an X Pirelli Nora that cannot be affected by card effects and they play a bunch of hand traps. So it's pretty annoying. How can we beat this deck? Well, in this video, we're gonna talk about that. So let's dive in the overview first and foremost. We already know that this deck typically plays the two main monsters purely Lily and then the purely along with any other engines that they happen to play, whether that be like the Dark Worlds, the Volcanic Shells, so on and so forth. Things that they can discard with their quick play spell cards in order to summon purely Lily and purely. The first thing to notice is that purely Lily is actually once per turn. It allows you to add any non-quick play purely card from your deck to your hand. And then Pirelli is actually not once per turn, so you can keep on spamming it to the board and continue to look at the top three cards of your deck, kind of like Sky Striker, Area Zero, and then add one Pirelli card that you excavate to your hand. And typically how it works is they bank on this card, My Friend Pirelli. This is a card, continuous card, they pay 500, they reveal three Pirelli cards from the deck that can be the same name, and then they add one randomly from their deck to the hand. So if they have three in the deck, they automatically add whatever they want by revealing all three. And then they have a bunch of the different quick play spell cards that we will probably see around the format. Happy memory, sleepy memory, pretty memory, delicious memory, and also the filled spell card, which is quite good. It allows them to prevent you from targeting them on the turn that the purely cards are summoned. And then also if you get rid of a face up purely XYZ, they could dispatch summon one level one purely monster from their deck or grave. So instant recursion. And the annoying thing about my friend Pirelli, obviously, is when you get rid of the XYZ monster purely on the field, they get to add back three Pirelli quick plays from their graveyard to their hand with different names. So it's like a spellbook of judgment. They're instantly going plus three when you get rid of one of their monsters, which is punishing you. And yeah, it's really, really annoying. So let's talk about some of the hand traps that we can beat this deck. Ash Blossom, this is going to be a mainstay in most people's decks, this format. Generally, Ash Blossom works very well. Again, things like Pirelli Lily, My Friend Pirelli, or even the Quick Play spell cards because they do include the effect to special summon from the deck. But you guys have to really watch out. Uh, based on what your opponent's doing, you can kind of gain information about how good or bad their hand is. So if they're going ahead and activating Pirelli Pretty Memory, that's just an effect that they can activate instantly because it says each player gains a thousand life points and they can apply the following effect. So they can do that when they don't have any cards on the field. They don't have to commit anything to the field. I generally wouldn't want to ash this because you don't know how good their hand is if they're starting off with something like this. You could just wait and hold it until they really need it, like something like a Pirelli Lily or maybe My Friend Pirelli. Just so, uh, the nice thing about hitting Lily is just so they don't get My Friend Pirelli on the table, which could backfire against you on your turn because then you might not have a way to get it off the table. So if you get rid of their XYZ, they get to add plus three. So we want to prevent that from hitting the table if we can. So generally, I would like to ash a Pirelli Lily. I don't want to ash something like a pretty memory and I don't want to ash something like a sleepy memory because it's um, also uh, something they can activate with no cards on the on the field because uh, it just says once applied the next battle or effect damage you take this turn becomes zero so they can activate that without any cards. The ones that you want to hit are the ones that they do require something on the field however. For example, purely happy memory. If their hand is bad they're going to go normal summon a hand trap maybe like a veil or something and then they activate purely happy memory because purely happy memory requires them to choose a card on the field and until the end of the next turn, the first time that card will be destroyed by card effect, it's not destroyed. They have to choose a card on the field in order to activate this card, especially some of the Pirelli from their deck. So if they're going like set a card or normal summon the monster and activate Pirelli Happy Memory, we already know that they probably don't have Pirelli Pretty Memory or Pirelli Sleepy Memory in their hand or any way to get to that because they're already committing to the board and then they're activating Happy Memory. They're wasting a card from their hand. So there I would probably Ash just because we know this is probably one of the only quick play spell cards they have in their hand. It might be their only starter. So if we Ash there, it's really going to burn. They're kind of telegraphing information that their hand is already bad. And same thing with Pirelli Delicious Memory. If they're summoning a monster or setting a monster and activating Pirelli Delicious Memory, we already know their hand is bad. They probably only have Delicious Memory or Happy Memory, so let's Ash that and then hope that they don't have any other plays. Generally, this would probably pass their turn because their hand's probably chock full of hand traps and then they just had like the Pirelli Memory as a uh, starter. So that's where you should Ash and then in addition to Pirelli Lily. 
Nibiru is not that good against this deck because generally they can play around and play all their plays with less than five summons, but certain times they do get greedy and sometimes they go more than five summons. So if you are main decking this card, this format, then it could actually be live. It's not like the worst card in the world, but it just note that it's not always going to be live. So I would definitely side it out if you're already main decking it or just not side it in if you have Nibiru in your side deck. It's just not a very good card against this deck in general. Ghost Stoker is actually not bad. The one thing that it stops first and foremost is my friend Pirelli. This is just an annoying card. They obviously have to activate it first because it's a continuous spell card and then they have to use the effect by paying 500 life points. So the ignition effect there, you can go Stoker and it's kind of like a two for one. You get rid of the my friend Pirelli as a one for one, but you also get rid of it on your turn. So it's not there on the table. Now they could activate a second copy from the hand, but they're not going to be able to use the effect of search because that's only once per turn. So they're just committing useless cards to the field and then it makes it a little better for you to play around things. So Ghost Joker is very nice there. The other thing it hits is the field spell as well. If you can't afford them to get some follow up by special summoning a monster from their field, uh, from their deck or graveyard after you get rid of the XYZ monster from the field, then you could also go stroke at that. And then of course we do have the Pirelli monsters as well. The effects where Pirelli Lily can target a quick play in their graveyard to XYZ summon a monster that mentions that quick play spell card in the graveyard. You can go stroke at that so they don't get the summon. And same thing as Pirelli trying to use it from hand. You can go stroke at that, destroy it. They don't get the XYZ summon. Sometimes that can be very impactful, especially in like a simplified game state where they have to bank on resolving that Pirelli name. You could just go stroke at that. So go stroke I do quite like against this deck for that matter. And then let's talk about Cyframe Gear Gamma. This is a very powerful card this format because it takes care of a lot of things. In addition to the monsters, it also deals with things like Girl Knockbird, certain hand traps, shifter, things that your opponent might shotgun. But it's also very, very good in this deck. You definitely want to hold it for things that are uh, once per turn effects, so things like the Pirelli Lily. Uh, you might also choose to hit the Pirelli if they open kind of bad, if they went like set a card, activate Pirelli Happy Memory, for example, so you know they don't have any follow-up, then you could definitely Gamma there as well. I generally like to do it at least on Pirelli or Pirelli Lily just to prevent them from starting their engine. You could, if you choose so, uh, you could just hold it as well for the purely second effect where they have to reveal a card from their hand to special summon. Um, so then that way you know that they're committing. But I think it's a little better to probably do it when they excavate the top three cards of the deck just because the effects aren't once per turn. So you might as well just not let them have the chance to add another card from their deck to their hand as well. And then obviously doing it again on purely Lily is very powerful because it's only once per turn. If you're playing a deck like Cash where you can Shifter, definitely side in Shifter. It's very powerful against this deck. They don't get any spell cards in Grave, so they cannot add it back with My Friend Pirelli. They cannot attach it with Pirelli Plump, which is one of their main plays. Uh, they cannot use Pirelli Lily, more importantly, to target spell card in the graveyard to go into the XYZ. So Shifter is very, very nice against this deck. Ghost Mourner, Imperm, and Baylor are actually surprisingly quite good against this deck because you're getting a little bit of a two for one. You're hitting the Pirelli or the Pirelli Lily, and you're also getting the secondary effect, allowing them to go in the XYZ, so they have to summon another body of the board to do that. The only issue with these cards is if they are playing Pirelli Stray Street and they have that on the table, you cannot actually target Pirelli monsters to turn their summon, so it's kind of bad in that aspect. But Imperm is a little nicer because if they don't have that and on your turn you draw it as your sixth card, you can actually use it against one of the smaller purely XYZs when they have Sleepy Memory underneath it. So then they're forced to use their trap card, Purely Leap, to go into X Purely Noir in order to draw the cards in the standby. So you're kind of denying them off of one or two draws potentially there. So it's kind of got some niche interactions there. It's slightly better than Mourner Imperm. Uh, it's slightly better than Mourner and Valor. And the other thing is obviously Mourner, you can't hit it when they go normal summon Pirelli Lily, Pirelli, because it only works when they special summon a monster, so that's something to keep note of as well. DD Crow is actually not a bad card in the metagame by any means. It's somewhat playable against Super Heavy Samurai on their Scarecrow. Uh, it's decently good against Pirelli as well. You're able to hit the target for the Pirelli Lily that the target in the graveyard, so it doesn't get the effect to XYZ summon. You're also able to potentially hit um, my friend Pirelli, so they don't add things back to their hand, but bear in mind that it doesn't target, so they can still add back other three copies or another two copies if they have three copies of quick play spell cards in their grave. So it's not like the best card, but again, there's some nice usage against it, you know, against uh, certain matchups against some crossover. So that's maybe something you can consider for the metagame, but it has to have crossover. I don't think it's good enough to warrant siding strictly for Pirelli, obviously, but it still has that crossover. So if you're playing like a Beast Warrior deck like Tri Brigade, then it could have some usage there. Troll and Lockbird is also very good against this deck because they do a lot of searching. Generally, they're going to use their effects, the quick plays in the draw phase, so then they're able to special summon Pirelli Lily or Pirelli and then add during the draw phase. And because Drone Lockbird cannot be used in the draw phase, it's kind of 
uh, dead in that aspect. But at some point in the main phase, they're probably going to add, whether by Pirelli or my friend Pirelli, using the effect. And then you can drill them there. A lot of times they do end on a slightly worse board. It's not by any means a end all card that's as powerful as it is in the samurai matchup but again against this deck it has some crossover and it's decently playable where i think that it's decently good you guys should definitely play it especially also some of them are playing things like tactics um some players are even playing the like the pots just to draw cards just to filter through their deck so that also shuts that off as well and then one of my favorite cards that I've seen some players sort of consider in the OCG here and there is Retaliating C. We kind of talked about this previously in one of my Market Watch videos. But this can be chained to any of the quick play spell cards to special summon apparently from the deck. You, you activate Retaliating C and it becomes a pseudo shifter. All their cards start getting banished and then they have to get rid of the body, which is very hard as well. In the TCG, we do not have Stri Sky Striker Azalea. So they currently have like Cerberus, Nightmare, as well as the Fairy card. Um the uh twin there's a there's an ex there's a link monster that allows you to use two fairies to special summon it it's called protector of the ancient's moon and it has uh two fairy monsters and allows you to tribute itself to destroy one card your opponent controls so that's one of the other removals they have but they have to commit two cards to using this to get rid of retaliating c which is never a good thing and if you happen to play retaliating c there are actually targets that you can consider like contact the c which can be searched after Retaliating C hits the graveyard. Or if you're playing a deck that has Mole Cricket in it, like a Naturia deck, you can actually search the Mole Cricket after Retaliating C goes to the graveyard. But just bear in mind, it also banishes your cards too. So make sure you have a game plan to get rid of Retaliating C so you can play. But it does hurt this deck as well that I think it's definitely a worthy contender in the side deck. And it also works against things like Shadal Fusion and random other spell cards, random tournament players that are playing Polymerization, so on and so forth. Ghost Reaper and Winter Terries is also a card that has a lot of crossover in certain matchups. You can obviously hit X Purely Nor. So if you're playing a deck that's like very combo heavy and you can't rely on them having X Purely Nor, then maybe this is something that could definitely serve as a function. I just don't like this card because Purely's can still play a lot of hand traps. They still have a lot of advantage and they basically like Zodiac. They don't really need X Purely Nor. They can still make Zeus. They still have like Plump. They still have like Monster Negates in the form of Beauty. They have a lot of different other cards that they can kind of leverage. So you're kind of going neg one on the Ghost Reaper. So I don't really like that. But if your deck has like a, a struggling matchup against X Pirelli Noir or specific things in the extra deck, for example, against Samurai as well, and you have things to hit, then this could definitely be a card that you can consider as well. We talked about this in the last video about the Market Watch deck lockdown. This is a card that I really, really love right now. Neither player can add cards from the deck except by drawing them. And then monsters cannot be special summoned from the main deck. You destroy this card during the second standby phase after activation, but it doesn't matter because you're getting advantage already by playing this instantly. It's a quick play spell, so you can use it going second as well. So they can't special summon anything from the deck off the field spell, for example. And it just puts in a lot of work against other things in the metagame, like Super Heavy Samurai as well. They can't add. It's like a mistake. So I really, really like this card right now. If you guys haven't picked them up, definitely pick it up already because it's very good against this deck as well and i know that one of the other powerful spell card floodgates was power filter that people were talking about neither player can spell some monsters with a thousand or less attack which includes these cards uh the purely cards it also shuts off side frame gear gamma which is kind of funny as well so if you're going uh second you can actually activate power filter and because gamma has a thousand attack you can't actually get gamma so that's kind of cool niche little interaction there uh, I don't know if it's that good because they're still able to normal summon apparently and start making their plays. Obviously, like a lot of their XYZs have a little more than um, thousand attack. So E Pearly Happiness and Beauty actually do. So they can actually go into Zeus and start playing around that. So it's not as effective, but it's just something to consider. And then Anti Spell is another one that I actually absolutely love against this deck. They're forced to chain all of their cards. Obviously, Zeus and maybe Nightmare Phoenix is one card that they can out with, but. It's very, very effective. They can't activate my friend Pirelli. If you have anything to protect the anti-spell, it kind of puts them in a bind. And same thing with Magic Deflector. It's just like another way to uh, stop them from playing as well. Dimension Barrier is another card that I think is actually decent because it has this niche crossover against certain decks like Sprite. Uh, it's okay against like other XYZs, like maybe Synchro decks against Sword. So it's maybe okay against Super Heavy Samurai. I don't know. You kind of shut off their Synchros, but you have to have 
plays for their other like XYZs and like the links. So I don't know how good it is, but against this deck, it's decently good. You can wait even until they commit the XYZ monster if they use something like Pirelli. So they'll go neg one from hand using the material to attach. And then you can activate barrier and it gets the effects. They can't continue to link climb into X Pirelli Nora. They can't use the effects either. So it could be decently good going first. And it also has crossover against Branded, of course, which is a very powerful deck that you don't want them to resolve Branded Fusion or make their plays. Uh, video is a little long, but let's keep talking about cards. XYZ Encore, this is another one that I love going second. It's very, very good because you can use this in the draw phase and they can't chain the trap card. They can't chain Purely Leap. So you get rid of the XYZ monster that has Purely Sleeping Memory beneath it before they're able to access their standby phase and then draw cards. That's traditionally a drawback of other cards like Herald of the Abyss where you have to wait until the main phase to activate this card. They might have already drawn four, two, four, maybe six cards in their standby phase off the X Pirelli Nora plus the Sleeping Memory beneath it. So that's why I like the XYZ Encore a little better. XYZ Encore, unfortunately, does have the drawback where they can special summon back either the Pirelli Lily or the Pirelli beneath it, and then they get the effects as well. So it's not like the best, but it's nice that you're able to prevent them from the draw and hopefully be able to kill them that turn. Herald of the Abyss is a little better than XYZ Encore because it doesn't trigger My Friend Pirelli. My Friend Pirelli says if a Pirelli XYZ monster you control leaves the field because of an its opponent card, but this Herald of the Abyss actually forces your opponent to send it so it doesn't count. So your opponent's the one doing the action, so they're not able to use My Friend Pirelli. It's also searchable off of tri Triple Tactics Thrust, so that's an added benefit as well. The 1500 life points is quite steep though, however, so I don't know if you guys really have the luxury to afford to play that. Also, it's only once per turn, so if you draw multiple copies, is not very good. However, Herald of the Abyss, one thing that it could deal with is actually Vanity's Fiend, which a lot of Pirelli players are citing. So if you don't have an answer to that, Herald of the Abyss is kind of rolled into one. It allows you to get rid of the Vanity's Fiend. The other drawback with Herald of the Abyss is if they have any of the Quick Play spell cards set with X Pirelli Nora, they can chain the Quick Play spell card, special summon out a Pirelli Lily, which is also a dark fairy type, which is the exact stat and the attribute you would be calling for Herald of the Abyss to get rid of X Pirelli Noir. So they would just send Lily instead and X Pirelli Noir still on the table and you kind of go negative on that trade. So that's the drawback with Herald of the Abyss, unfortunately. Same thing with Kaijus. They already get their draw and they also trigger My Friend Pirelli. So I don't really like this card. It also doesn't work against Vanity's Fiend, which says you cannot special summon. So unfortunately, Kaijus are a little bit of a dud there. They're also citing things like spell cancelers, so make sure you guys have answers for this, okay? Make sure you guys, the kaijus are kind of nice, it takes care of spell cancelers. Um, just be careful about these powerful floodgate monsters that might be seeing play in the metagame because they are very annoying to get rid of. So that's about all I had for this video. If you guys have any suggestions on how to beat Pirelli, if, you, if there's anything I missed, please let me know in the comments below because this will definitely be a popular card in the upcoming metagame. So we got to know how to beat this deck efficiently and what the best tools are for uh, preventing them from playing. And uh, other than that, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.